Hello, Abnormal Family. I uh, wanted to tell you all, this Friday night I'm doing a special. It's uh, about what's been going on in my life. A lot of you all have asked what's been happening and what kept me busy, why I disappeared for a while. And a lot of you know what's going on now because of everything that's been released. And um, a lot of things have been sent to me. And it's frustrating and it makes me very angry what was done behind the scenes. But having the proof of it now is going to make a big difference. But I'm going to talk about that Friday night. You guys are not going to want to miss that one. Uh, a lot of people have asked how they can help. And I'm going to tell you all how you can help. Because you all are amazing. We are a family. And the people that's reached out wanting to help has been amazing. And thank you very much. And I'm going to talk a little bit about it now. I think these people need exposed. These women have done some bad things. <sighs> July 24, 2023. My brother and I went on a fishing trip to Monroe Lake in Indiana. We have been there hundreds of times and been all over the place. We left on a Friday morning and got there Friday late afternoon. We brought a John boat and some basic essentials like a tent, my gun, just a small 38 special revolver, his gun, a 22 lever action rifle, and some firewood. We did not bring much food because we thought we would just eat fish and some small game if needed. Loaded everything into the boat and we went off before it started getting dark. The only light that we had was the ones on the boat and a small flashlight. After being on the water for about an hour, we found three small coves, perfect for us because it was out of the middle of nowhere so we could do anything really we wanted. We unloaded the boat and set up camp and another fire going to start fishing. My brother got a fire going, which was really nice because I was hungry. After a few minutes, I realized there was no sounds at all from my direction, not even crickets, and I was not getting any hits whatsoever on my fishing rig, so I gave up and started walking back to the camp, which was about 20 yards from the boat. When I got back to my brother, I asked him if he noticed the lack of nature sounds, and he replied, no, nah, I didn't pay much attention, and then we heard it, a loud howl. It sounded like it was about a mile away. It sent chills down my spine, and my brother instantly started shaking. Then I was like, what the hell are we doing? We are both grown men. We were 19 and 18. That was mostly likely a coyote, right? He agreed with a nod and we both decided to lay down in the tent and call it a night. But I got my gun out just to be safe because that was really close and really scary sounding. The next morning we woke up to get the day started and thought we would go to see if we could find a footprint or a scat trail from the coyote we heard last night. So we ventured about half a mile into the woods from our camp when we came up on a very large coyote dead and ripped shreds about two foot off the game trail my brother was the most interested in what he what could do this but i was more interested in going back to camp we got back to camp i went to my phone to text my dad and ask what big predators could take a coyote and do what we have them in indiana what could do this dad to shred something like that in indiana Dad replied, no such predator is in Indiana, a cougar maybe, but unlikely, so I figure it may have been another coyote fighting for territory. We decided to only stay one more night. We both did not want to find the bigger coyote. So we went out for the boat, and while out fishing, because we had no luck in the cove, we made it to this rock face that we called our crappie honey hole, because we always caught crappie there. We started fishing and did not stop until the sun started to set. We both were hungry, so we called it a good day and started back to camp. This little boat didn't go fast, but it was better than a canoe or a kayak by this time. By this time we got back to camp, it was dark. The moon was high and very quiet again. So we slid the boat onto the bank and made our way to start a fire in the fire pit to cook our catch of the day, to only notice that our camp looked like a war zone. Everything tore up and thrown almost around like someone was looking for something or someone. We both grabbed our guns and took the safety off, then looked at each other with the same look. Time to go. We didn't even grab anything. Just as we started making our way to the boat, we heard a deep gurgling growl out in the distance. As we got to the boat, my brother grabs a flashlight and points it towards the camp, like we both stopped with fear all over our bodies. The light revealed two big yellow eyes about five feet off the ground. We were both shaking. I started backing up my, to my brother, and my brother jumped in the boat and started the motor. 
I then followed but did not want to take my eyes off whatever this was. As I got in the boat, I looked away for less than a second and looked back. And it was gone. We got about 20 yards out into the water and I used the light again to look for it. Those eyes came out of the darkness again, yellow like the sun and piercing to the core. We were scared and we started going further away. It came out of the dark and to the edge of the water. We didn't see it as well as we would have liked, but we believed that it was a werewolf because it looked like a dog in the silhouette standing on its hind legs. Then it stood up, even taller on its hind legs, like it had been slunched over. At a staggering, I would guess six foot tall, and then it let out this howl that made the, the sound of an eerie scream across the lake that pierced the silence, and you could hear the echo across the coves. I point the flashlight right at it, and what looked like a piece of our tent clutched to its hand or paw, shaking it in the air. I moved my brother out of the way and put the throttle on high. Even though the part of the lake we were in was an idle zone, I only wanted to get as far away as possible. We got back to the boat ramp area, and we got the boat loaded on the trailer, and we booked it out of there. I will never go back to this place. We left everything that we had for whoever wanted it, because we felt like if we would have stayed, this thing was ready to shred us. It was waving the tin at us as a warning, letting us know it was going to get us. I still have nightmares to this day. What do you think was going to happen to us? Guys, I think that they were uh, most definitely in danger and probably would have been attacked. And it was probably showing them the tent in its hand because it probably ripped through their tent thinking that they were there would be my guess. So, what do you all think? Keep your head on a swivel, guys, if you're ever out there because these things will hunt you. And it sounds to me like they're getting even more and more brave. And that's scary. Keep your head on a swivel, guys. Don't be something's dinner. And we'll see you on the next one.